So what we're going to do here, um, I'm just going to type clear here so my screen is nice and clean, is we need to figure out what the MAC address is for the CC2 instance. And then we're going to use that MAC address to get the security group IDs. And then from that, we'll use the CLI to update and create our own um, inbound rule. So whenever you want to get information about an EC2 instance, that is where the metadata service comes into play. And uh, it's very easy to access uh, on a server, whether you're here in a, your SSH into an EC2 instance or you're here in Cloud9, you just type in curl hyphen S HTTP colon forward slash forward slash. Um, and then it's 169.254.169.254 latest uh, and metadata. So here it's showing you that there's a way you can get a lot of data in here. This 169.254, uh, you should know this IP address. It should be etched into your brain because it's uh, definitely a standard here when working with EC2. And as a developer, you need to know it. Uh, but we need to find the MAC address. And here we have this thing that says MAC. So we'll go ahead here and type in MAC. And now we have the MAC address. Uh, and the next thing uh, is we're going to use this MAC, uh, MAC address to find out all the security group IDs uh, for the um, network interfaces that use that MAC. So what we'll do is we're going to hit up and we're just going to back out here a bit and we'll do network and we'll just piecemeal it because if you make the whole link, sometimes it's a big pain in the butt and it's hard to hunt down the problems. So I'm going to just keep on doing this bit by bit. Um, oh, it just shows the MAC address there. That's even more convenient. And we'll just hit enter and then we want our security group IDs. And there, that's so we only have one security group. If there was multiples, we uh, like attach the CC2 instance, we'd probably see more. But we only have this single one here. So now that we have this uh, security group ID, what we'll do is we will use the CLI. The CLI, it was CLI is, is already installed on this Cloud9 environment because it's Amazon Linux One already comes pre installed. And Cloud9 also uh, loads your credentials from your user account. So we don't have to uh, play with the credentials file here. If you're doing this on your local computer, you absolutely would have to set that up. We'll type in AWS EC2, and we'll type in authorize uh, security groups um, ingress. And there is a new AWS CLI, and it has autocomplete. So like you could hit tab, and it would complete that stuff there for you. But I don't believe I have the latest one installed here, so I have to do things manually. Uh, and so we'll place in that security group. Uh, we'll say what port we want to open up, so port 8080. We want, we'll have to specify the protocol. It's going to be um, a TCP. And then we need to supply the CIDR. Um, so that's the IP address that we're going to want to be accessible. So before we hit enter here, we actually need to go get our IP address because that's what we're going to put in here. Um, so what we'll do is use one of AWS's services, which is called Check IP. So um, it's a very useful service. Let's go use that now. So I just opened up a new tab here, and I'm just going to type in, I'm going to type in um, check IP, Amazon AWS.com. And this will tell me what the, my IP address for my local computer is. There's other websites like what's my IP, but let's use the AWS service because they took the time to make it for us. And we'll go back over here. And we will hit enter and we want forward slash 32. That forward slash 32 is very, very important because that says only a single um, only a single IP address. A CIDR, a CIDR block is a range of IP addresses. Uh, it's something we definitely cover uh, in this course. And you definitely need to know what uh, networking like CIDR blocks are in the associate. But for the time being, if you don't know what it is, just understand that you need to put your IP address in there and type in forward slash. And what we'll do is we'll go hit enter. Um, and actually, before we do that, no, no, we'll just hit enter. That's fine. So it didn't show us anything. Um, so I mean, I believe that successfully created it. So we'll go over here and just take a look here to see if it actually made it. And there it is. But let's say that uh, we didn't want to make our way over here and we wanted to do this programmatically. Let's go confirm the uh, security group um, through the CLI. So what we're going to do is type in AWS EC2, describe security groups. We're going to put in that group ID. It takes a, um, a bunch of them, so but we only need one here. And uh, we'll output it. This says text. That allows us to, uh, generally, it's uh, default JSON, but that's just really hard to read in this case. And then we're going to use filters. So we'll type in filters, name equals IP 
hyphen permission dot to hyphen port values equal 8080. So what I'm saying here is describe all the security groups to me and filter it out so we only, or only select this security group, uh, display this as text, and then filter it out so that we only see um, inbound rules that have port 8080. And we'll hit enter here. Um, and we have a invalid command there. So I'm just going to double check here. I might have typed something wrong. Permissions does not look spelt correctly to me. Um, yeah, it's going to be P E R permissions. And I'm still having a bit of trouble here. IP hyphen permissions um, to port. Oh, you know what? It's a singular permissions. It's not with an S, I think. There we go. So it's a little bit hard to read, but the uh, idea here is that it's going to say this is our security group that returned. It's saying that port 8080 has been set and that's the IP address. Now, if it hadn't been set and we ran this command, it would just show nothing. So the fact that something shows up here means that uh, that the security, uh, that um, that inbound rule was created. But of course, in practicality, you'd probably just use um, the the console. So now that uh, we have, and we'll just type clear here to clear this stuff up. So now that we've opened that that port, uh, the next thing is actually getting uh, the application running. Uh, but before we can even do that, we need to know what the actual IP address of this Cloud9 environment is. And I'm pretty sure if we use our EC2 instance here, we can go here and we can go and check it. And that is its public IP address. I think that would be the same thing. But let's again do it pragmatically. So we'll type in curl hyphen s HTTP colon forward slash forward slash 169.254.169.254.1. Latest metadata. I'm going to hit enter just so I, I'm not having too much trouble here. You can even see right here it's public IPv4. So we'll type in public IPv4. And it says 385.9.10. I'm going to go back here. Yep, so it's the same one there. So that's what we're going to use to um, access the uh, web application. And let's go ahead and actually start this application up. So to start it up, we just have to make sure we're in that study sync directory here. And we want to start it up on port 8080. So if you're wondering, like, why are we typing port 8080 there? Um, the way this application works, if you open up the index.js, um, it uses process env port, and it's going to pass that uh, port number to express. So it knows to start up on that port number. And uh, so what we'll do here is we'll just go and type in npm start. And we'll see if this starts up. And we have a little error here. And that's totally OK. It says failed to parse uh, package.json data. You know what happened? We forgot a comma. This is something I do all the time. So remember, we wrote this line in here. We have to just make sure there's a comma on the end of it or it's not valid JSON. And I'm just going to go back down here, hit uh, control C, which um, kills that there. And we'll hit up again. We'll see if we're in better shape. So now it says that it's launched on port 8080. So what we can do now is uh, get that IP address that we have um, earlier. So it is somewhere in here. Um, can't seem to see it. So I'm just going to go here and copy this here and make a new tab in terminal and just paste it in. Of course, we could just go to EC2 instance, but why do that when we can uh, try to do it the proper way? And so what we'll need to do is do this and say uh, port 8080. We're not going to open it up here, but I'm just typing it out so that I'm having less trouble here. And we'll just copy that, and we will see if this works. And there's our application. So this application doesn't really do much. Uh, you can select something and submit, but it doesn't really submit to anywhere. Uh, maybe we will start hooking this up and do more with it. I call this the study sync application. It's supposed to help you study, I guess. Um, but you know, it's just a superficial application. So now that uh, we have our application uh, running, and we can preview it from Cloud9, and we have some CLI experience, the next thing is to get a Git repository set up. So that's what we'll do next.